The gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Flood, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, before a workforce housing event in Columbus, Nebraska in January, I had the Joint Economic Committee pull some housing data regarding my district uh, before the event. I'd like to use this data to demonstrate the unique environment we're currently in for people that are looking for homes. Using the data provided from a couple of months back, I'd like to take a look at a theoretical example of the problem. Madison, Nebraska is in my home county. The average value of a single unit permitted in this county is $262,238. I was curious, given the current environment, how much would someone need to make in order to be able to afford the monthly payments on that home? If you start with a base assumption that the borrower has a 10% down payment, using the programs and loan products that are out there, you can get a mortgage rate of maybe around 6.805% if you're lucky from a local bank. You add in property taxes, homeowner's insurance, mortgage insurance, and now you're looking at roughly $2,081 monthly in housing payments. There's a rule of thumb in personal finance that your monthly housing expenses should not be greater than 30% of your monthly gross income. In order to remain within the scope of the 30% gross income rule of thumb, the borrower's income would need to be $6,938 a month. Annualized, that salary would be $83,257.20 a year. The problem is that the median monthly household income in my county is $5,095 or $61,140 a year. Now, it's worth mentioning that there are ways to get that monthly payment down. If the borrower were able to put 20% down, they'd get a better rate and not have to pay monthly for mortgage insurance, but the general problem remains the same. The cost associated with owning a home remains significantly higher than the medium household income of the people in this county. That's the problem we're seeing uh, just in Madison County, Nebraska, and across America. People that work hard should have the chance to live in a home and experience the American dream. One significant part of the problem is that the effective federal funds rate in February was the highest since 2001. In an environment with higher interest rates than we've had in a long time, the question is, how can we make home ownership possible for people trying to climb the economic ladder? Dr. Louds, do you frequently see a misalignment between the incomes in an area and the same area's housing prices, particularly in a high interest rate environment? Is that something that's becoming more common? Yes, absolutely. And you're from Nebraska, and I think it's really important to note that we've been seeing this in coastal areas across the nation for years, but now we're starting to see this move inwards. And part of that is because of migration flows that happened during the pandemic. Some of it is because of population growth of young adults, and it's putting a lot of pressure on the underbuilding, which is continuing across the nation. Uh, second question, how big a role do interest rates play in this environment relative to other factors? The cost of raw materials, cost of labor, general housing shortages. Since 2009, we've seen 16% inflation on building homes in Nebraska. Are, what are interest rates doing to the problems that you know have been impacting coastal areas and now in inland areas like mine? Mm -hmm. So what we consistently hear is that home builders have to borrow to build they have to finance that project. And so as interest rates went up, it became even more expensive and they became reticent to actually build more new homes. They're now coming back into the market, but I think it's really important to note that as interest rates are higher than what they have been, they're probably going to be tiptoeing into the market and we really do need that inventory. 85% of homes that are purchased are existing homes and those homes are getting older because of the lack of new building. So what I really focused on are homes that cost between two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's really the sweet spot, you know, when you look at what our workforce needs. Are you seeing enough building activity for those homes to meet demand? And talk about manufactured housing. I think the very quick answer is no. We're not seeing enough homes at that very affordable price point. Um, when we're seeing new builds, the typical home price that's being sold is over four hundred thousand dollars. That's not affordable to many communities and to many Americans. As far as manufactured housing, that's one solution to looking at the housing crisis. Now, I know about Hagerstown, Maryland. I've heard that there's some effort going on there. Any other place in America that's using, that's putting together like a development for manufactured housing that people in Nebraska could be looking at for, to guidance? For I guidance? think that's a great case study. I don't have any others off the top of my head. Well, I would just say this to the rest of America. If you are a city leader, if you are running a city, if you are working on solving this problem and you've effectively using manufactured housing in a development, 
please reach out to my office, let us know. We need to know about it, we need to investigate it. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. The gentlewoman from Colorado, Mrs. Pe Ms. Pedersen, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member for 